Philadelphia, hub city of the Delaware Valley, sometimes called the workshop of the world. This is where Kenny lives. It's a thriving, bustling, important place. You can feel it by just walking along its waterfront. You can sense it by driving along its new expressways. And you can see it by touring its transformed downtown areas. Of course, everything isn't new in Philadelphia. A lot of it is old and world-renowned, like Independence Hall, where Kenny's heritage of freedom got started. Now, if you look around Kenny's hometown, you'll find a lot of building and expanding going on. New bridges are taking shape. New schools are under construction. New housing developments are spreading out. New shopping centers are going up. New industries are moving in. And just south of the city, on the banks of the broad Delaware, is a unique multi-million dollar power plant making it possible for us at Philadelphia Electric to keep our contract with Kenny. Before we go any further, you probably ought to meet Kenny. That's his house right here. Where the light's on, that's his room. And where all that noise is coming from, well, that's Kenny. Now, perhaps you're wondering what's so special about Kenny. His mother could tell you, or his dad. But since we have the contract with him, we'll tell you. It goes back to the day he was born. You see, on that day, in this hospital, 16 other babies were born. In all the hospitals in Greater Philadelphia, the number was 270. All over the United States, that same day, 10,800 new babies joined us. And 10,800 have joined us every day since then. Well, in a little while, they brought Kenny and all those other new babies home. And things were never quite the same after that. The laundry equipment went on double duty. The refrigerator door kept opening and closing. The range worked at odd hours. And there were all sorts of new chores around the house. Well, so much of this went on, and there were so many new babies on Kenny Street, we had to run a new power line just to keep them comfortable. But that was only the beginning. For by the time Kenny was a year old, he had managed to drink 236 quarts of milk. And on top of that, polished off 500 jars of baby food, all by himself. Kenny's mother kept him well supplied with baby oil, diapers, rubber pants, and an occasional toy. But when everything was added up, Kenny's total bill came to $800 for the first 12 months. And for all the Kennys in America, an extra three and a half billion dollars worth of goods a year had to get produced, distributed, and sold. It's no wonder, then, that here in the workshop of the world, bulldozers are clearing old land so that new foundations can be laid, new structures erected, new tools of production created. But with every passing day, as Kenny gets older and his needs grow greater, 10,800 more Kennys join the parade and industry keeps running to keep up. Now, of course, industry couldn't keep up at all if it weren't for the fact that every American worker has, on the average, 13 horsepower, or about 60 electrical devices to help him get his job done. This is why Americans live better than any other people on Earth. But if we are to continue our abundant way of life and give Kenny all the good things he's entitled to, the electrical horsepower available to every worker must be constantly increased. Otherwise, there simply won't be enough good things to go around. Meanwhile, in our stores, schools, offices, and public buildings, more and more electric power is being put to work to make our lives pleasanter and more productive. In our homes, the use of electric power increases every year, adding more leisure, comfort, and convenience, and, of course, helping with the chores all those new babies add to our households. 
And that's why in the past 10 years, the demand for power in the greater Philadelphia area has more than doubled. To keep up with this demand, we in Philadelphia Electric have invested over this period more than $600 million in new generation transmission and distribution facilities. So when Kenny arrives on the scene, there's plenty of power available at low cost to meet all his immediate needs. But what of his future, his security, his opportunity that depends so much on there being plenty of power available? Kenny's future is in good hands. The same engineering foresight which made abundant power available at his birth We'll see to it that the growing needs for electrical power are fulfilled in the years ahead. One way that the engineers meet increasing demands for electricity is to constantly improve the efficiency of the generating stations. The huge plants along the rivers where electricity is generated. Back in 1899, the Edison generating station in Philadelphia started converting the energy in coal into electricity. From one ton of coal, steam was produced at 365 degrees Fahrenheit and a pressure of 150 pounds per square inch to provide 460 kilowatt hours of electricity. Efficiency was increased through the years to the point where in modern generating stations, the same ton of coal producing steam at 1100 degrees Fahrenheit under 2400 pounds pressure per square inch gives out 2900 kilowatt hours of electricity. Engineering research led to a remarkable breakthrough in efficiency when steam temperature was increased to 1,200 degrees under enormous 5,000 pounds per square inch pressures, resulting in what is known as supercritical steam. A supercritical steam generating plant could convert the same single ton of coal into 3,350 kilowatt hours of electricity. Philadelphia Electric saw in supercritical steam power generating a new era in efficiency. A team of the nation's greatest industrial firms joined with PE to solve the problems involved in the design of the first unit on the company system to operate at supercritical steam conditions. Months of special testing, research, investigation, and construction were poured into the building of a host of components and sub-assemblies before they could be incorporated into the station itself. As the various sub-assemblies were being built, the plant itself began to take shape. A closer view shows the true size of the project. Walls supported by these rigid frames housed the turbo generators. But to contain the boilers, parts of which arrive by train, takes an even taller structure. Resting on foundations deep in the ground, the building rises 18 stories. cavities like this contain boilers 11 stories high, hung entirely from the top to enable them to stretch with heat. To construction crews, a power plant means pipes, big ones to tap the river and divert part of it through the plant. Small ones to cool the exhaust steam and reduce it to water. Thick ones to connect boiler to turbine. Thin ones to link generator to transformer. At Eddystone, all these pieces were carefully woven together by many skilled hands into one tremendously complicated working system. Through this system passed two million pounds of steam per hour, far too much for one turbine. So Edison has five consecutive turbines to utilize the energy. Every cubic inch of steam entering the first stage here ultimately expands to 2,600 cubic inches, spinning the generators to produce a total of 325 million watts. This super pressure turbine alone accounts for 44 million watts of power. the steam's fury, the turbine spindle is encased in a double shell. 
Here, the outer shell's top half is guided home by massive bolts designed to combat the internal pressures. These thousands of parts cannot work together without a control system that knows everything taking place throughout the vast plant. Over an intricate network of wires and contacts, the information flows to the master control room where it is organized. Then, fed to a maze of dials. Because the system is so automatic, the whole plant can operate itself for days without a human hand touching these controls. Now every detail of construction, every piece of equipment is checked and proved ready for service. Testing extends to the substation area just beyond the plant. Here the generated electricity is raised to 132,000 volts prior to placing it on the outgoing transmission lines. Probably nothing is more important than these bus bars and switches, the vital links between Eddystone's power and the Philadelphia electric system. Finally, the first train of coal arrived, and the giant car dumper went into action. tons of coal this pile grew to 300,000 tons, enough for about two months' supply for the power plant's hungry furnaces. And now, after five years of research, development, and construction, the time came to light the fires at Eddystone. In the control room, the countdown began. Air compressors energized. River water pumps. Ah. Circulating water pumps. Ah. Force draft band. Ah. All furnaces are lit off. Water temperature rising. Boiler feed pressure maximum. Stop valves, open. Turbines are coming up to speed. All instruments reporting correctly. Gradually, the operator brings his generators up to the speed of all other generators in the Philadelphia electric system. Only when the synchroscope hits the top can Eddystone's main switch be thrown. Three seconds, two seconds, one, sink. Eddystone is on the line, and a new era in the history of private power generation has dawned. Philadelphia Electric has added to its system the most efficient power plant in the world that will produce one kilowatt hour from just six tenths of a pound of coal. But all this is of no concern whatsoever to our friend Kenny, nor should it be. Providing power is our job. From the moment he was born, the miracle of electricity has worked to make him comfortable and happy. All through his life, he will depend upon us to provide ever-increasing amounts of low-cost power to meet the growing needs of his community. Today, Eddystone, a new milestone of progress is on the line. Tomorrow will bring new challenges. But whatever the requirements of the future may be, the men who produce power for the Delaware Valley, the men who built Eddystone, will keep their contract with Kenny.